let me give some backdrop and some background to who Up the Vote 901 is and the work that we are involved in, which is presented in the paper and what we're trying to provide and the peculiarity of this moment of political infighting, conflict, and chaos. So Up the Vote 901 was actually founded in 2017. Uh, as a byproduct of some efforts and initiatives that have started immediately after the election in 2016, where I woke up and felt a sense of uh, despair and frustration about the trajectory of the country and started to do some research on how uh, turnouts in elections usually favor particular types of candidates. And as I looked at the landscape in Memphis and Shelby County, uh, we came into the realization that there was a direct correlation between certain types of candidates and certain turnout, certain levels of turnout, especially as it related to the low turnout in uh, Tennessee in general, as Don has pointed out, and then even more specifically in Memphis and Shelby County. And so uh, over the last several years, we've done some organizing, trying to engage people about what is important to them, issue-based organizing that has uh, helped us to shape our work into the mission and the vision of what I'm about to share in a minute. But as Don said, with this being National Voter Registration Day, I want to do a shameless plug and say anybody can register right now. If you go to upthevote901.com, if you are in the state of Tennessee, and you can click the link there. Uh, you can not only vote, uh, get registered to vote, you can, as Don was talking about, check your status. You can apply for our absentee ballot, and you can even fill out the U.S. Census because the deadline is September 30th. So we hope that anybody would check that out. If you have any questions that you want to ask us directly, you can send an email to uptovote901 at gmail.com or check us out on Facebook. But the vision and the mission of the Vote 901 is to give more political power, information, and representation to more people and to increase voter turnout in Memphis and Shelby County in every election. So let me say a little bit about these three components, power, information, representation, and we talk about them in explicit detail in the paper. And then I'll say something about our recommendations and I'll pass it on to Brother Mitchell Brown. So there are three components to our vision, as I said, power, information, and representation. And they're all important because together they establish the matrix of political empowerment, which is ultimately what we're after. So it's not enough to simply register voters who don't feel adequately empowered or informed. That actually makes them reluctant to stay civically engaged long enough to ensure that they have adequate representation through and beyond electoral politics. I often say that Memphis and Shelby County, and it's true in other pockets around the country, don't really have a voter registration problem. That's not our issue. We have more of a voter engagement problem, which is a byproduct of a voter education problem that I'll say more about. But here are the ways in which we have encountered the components of power, information, and representation playing out in our community. So power, for us, is the capacity to get something done. And of our three components, I think power seems to evoke the most fear. It's easier to speak of proper representation because of a peculiar uh, or particular elected official being seen as a hero for us or a villain who absolves us of responsibility and obligation beyond helping to elect them. Information also seems rather neutral enough as we listen to people elaborate on public issues and their roles in various forms of leadership. So both representation and information point to public officials, maybe even as political saviors or saboteurs, and it makes those public officials and not the people ourselves, the ones who are responsible for whether or not our political will ends up being actualized. But in contrast, when you're talking about power, it literally takes training and practice, both for organizers and for the general community, for us to be able to engage with people and talk about power. So that power is the ability to change an environment and it's measured by how much change we can accomplish. And it's easy as a concept to grasp, but at the same time, it's not been too hard to imagine that in political strategy, money and mainstream media are not the things which provide the greatest chance for political leverage. Our greatest potential is captured in our ability and capacity to organize people. So people power is something that is sincerely 
the driving force for Up the Vote 901. This is not just some rhetorical pontification. Numerically, money and media tools have historically sought to only persuade a small number of registered or potential voters to turn out, and they just literally gamble that the rest of the population will not participate. This is part of the reason why things like name recognition go so far, because people on both sides of the aisle ultimately gamble on the fact that if you can spend enough money to make sure your name is recognized, the lack of education that people have in the political environment will lean them into participating at the ballot box, but not having enough information on the issues that they are passionate about and where people stand on the issues to be able to vote with confidence for someone who they feel closely aligns to their issues. What they ultimately end up having to do is what one sister did or what one sister confessed to us who had been voting for 40 years as we were holding a uh, voter empowerment symposium back in 2018, she said she did not know until that voter empowerment symposium, which is where we gather people together and give them voter information related to the issues. She said she didn't even know that she could leave a uh, ballot space blank. She thought that if you did not vote for every position that leaving a position blank would nullify or invalidate your entire ballot. So she would literally just go through and in the spaces where she did not know much about the seat or even the candidates, she would just figure out whose name was most recognizable. And oftentimes that's the gamble that elected officials and aspiring elected officials take. Instead of adequately educating people on the issues, they literally use money and media tools to persuade a small number of registered or potential voters to turn out and just gamble that the rest of the population will not participate. And regretfully, this has often been a winning bet. So we understood that if and when we could activate a fraction of the people left out of the normative political universe, we would begin to see some results and hope for more power and better change over time. And this thinking led us to craft the goal of developing a voting base, a voting base that supports an agenda based upon issues that are important to them. And we crafted the agenda. We even uh, held a convention in 2019 and we'll be moving forward. But the goal here is straightforward. We are committed to working for a base large enough to turn the tide of local elections and foster a popular movement that will give birth to candidates who support our agenda and support candidates who align with those aspirations. So that's the power piece. As it relates to information, which I was actually leaning into because all of these are interconnected, but information is about having access to the necessary material and the insights that adequately inform our social and political maneuvers. So information for us is a close second to power. We found that people tend to feel disempowered by what they don't know, our ignorance, if you will. So if we consider how the few too often rule the many, then we can argue that the few only do so by keeping the many ignorant and fearful. So it bears mentioning that many other people engaged by Up the Vote 901 have felt politics and politicians tend to operate under a non-transparent cloak. So what they imagine behind the cloak is an array of privileged people who are protecting their individual opulence and privileges and cementing the advantages of corporations who fund campaigns via quid pro quo or this for that. So that's not how democracy is intended to function. And this is more aligned with the plutocracy or oligarchy. That's not the type of information that we're after. And it makes me think of another encounter that we had um, not long after the 2018 election that goes back to inadequacy in information and how it relates to a lack of participation. That's usually read as apathy and there's some of that, but that's not the totality of what it is. So after the 2018 election, I'm at a store in the city of Memphis and I have a shirt on just like this, I have the vote 901 shirt. And a security guard at the store sees the shirt and says to me that they were disappointed because they participated or what they said was, I voted for Hillary and she still, and the other guy still won. And I said, hmm, yeah, that was a frustrating election. That was 2016. Did you vote in the recent election? It was uh, the Shelby County primary election in 2018. And he said to me, I couldn't vote in that election because that was a county election and I live in the city. And I said, 
you live in the city of Memphis? And he said, yes. I said, well, the city of Memphis is in the county of Shelby. He said, I could have voted in that one. Yes, you were supposed to vote in that one. And that is another example of how a lack of information renders some of our people politically powerless because of a manufactured ignorance, which is a byproduct of a lack of information. And the last one is representation, which is the concrete assurance that the person in political office shares at least a substantial amount of our convictions. And notice, it's important to say this in this environment, a substantial amount or a reasonable amount of our convictions. Nobody gets everything that they want. And at the end of the day, the issues that are most important to us should be the ones where we find which elected official or aspiring elected official most closely aligns to those convictions. And so this is really rooted in the impetus of up the vote insofar as when you have a small percentage of the electorate participating, you do not have a high probability of having someone in office who represents the will of the majority of the people. So we talk about what representation means in the paper and some of the strategies that we're engaged in to try to increase that. We have two recommendations and I say this and I pass it on to brother Mitchell Brown. Our two recommendations are relatively clear and I think can be tackled if enough of us get behind the initiative immediately. First is automated voter registration statewide. So one of the ways to shift our attention, our attention from these massive voter projects into voter education initiatives and to remove one of the major barriers of voter suppression is to just automate registration. And this could also relieve the state, um, uh, the secretary of state from the burden of trying to process so many incomplete registration forms. If y'all go back and review some of what happened with the Tennessee voter project that Up to Vote 901 was a part of in 2018, the Secretary of State and even the Election Commission in Memphis and Shelby County were complaining about the number of incomplete applications that they received or that they received them at the last minute, so on and so forth. And uh, we ultimately came to the conclusion that they were, they were blowing whistles or dog whistles, if you will, trying to echo these efforts of voter suppression. At the end of the day, if you want to make it more simple, and I would encourage the Secretary of State and the Shelby County Election Commission, just advocate for uh, automated registration. That way you don't have to worry about the ballots and all of that other stuff being incomplete. The second thing that I'm already trying to drop seeds for is massive voter education initiatives. So it should not take somebody with a social science degree to be able to access the necessary information they need to empower them to participate in the political process in a way that they see fit. So what we need to do is focus on ways to give all of the people the information that they need. We need to educate them on the issues and how their issues are connected to what's happening in the political infrastructure in a way that would empower them to go out and participate.